To me, oaks just seem like really great storytellers. We have an oak tree on site that is estimated to be about 300 years old. That one oak tree provided acorns to indigenous Americans. That one tree has seen children of all different cultures grow up. It's seen the Nature Center become what it is today. Oaks are important for the environment for lots of different reasons. Probably one of the most noteworthy is the fact that they produce a really valuable food source, which is acorns. Um, a lot of our native mammals and native birds rely on this food source to survive the winter. Oak trees are also a host species for over 500 different species of um, butterflies and moths. What we're starting to see with our oaks is that they're having a harder time regenerating. We may go into the forest and we'll see lots of really big oaks, but we're not seeing a lot of small baby oaks, and that's where the problem lies. Particularly, we're starting to see this in our old growth forest habitat. Instead of these pristine forests being dominated by these long-lived species such as oaks, they're being dominated by younger species such as maples. Maples are great, they're native, um, we want to have maples. Where the problem lies is if all of our oak trees become replaced with maples, we're gonna have big consequences. Cincinnati Nature Center is really interested in trying to understand what is influencing oak regeneration. One hypothesis is that drought is what's influencing this dynamic between oaks and maples. Oaks are a drought tolerant species. They've got really thick bark and really deep roots that kind of allow them to hold onto water um, compared to maples that have really thin bark and shallow root systems. Way back when, a couple centuries ago, droughts were much more frequent and more severe than they are today. The second hypothesis we're interested in exploring is how invasive species may be impacting oaks and maples. Some invasive species produce these compounds that are called allelopathic compounds. They're essentially toxins that these plants can put into the ground that do a really good job of keeping anything but that invasive species growing there. So for example, Amar honeysuckle produces these allelopathic compounds. So oftentimes when you see honeysuckle growing, you may not see a lot of anything else. The first step of trying to understand this oak regeneration was doing a survey of our old growth forest. If this is the type of habitat we want to create, we first need to know what is growing there. The second part of this project is a little bit more detailed. So we initiated a common garden experiment. A common garden experiment is when you control for everything you can possibly think of, except for the variables you're interested in exploring. In our common garden experiment is where we are manipulating drought and the presence of honeysuckle. Every week, I have a dedicated task force of volunteers that come out, water these plants, giving them different volumes of water depending on if they're receiving the drought treatment or a non-drought treatment. And then periodically, we also water them with what we're calling a honeysuckle tea. What we hope to learn from doing all of this work is essentially how we can create really healthy forests at the Nature Center and to be really good examples of how other land managers can create healthy old growth forests where oaks are the dominant species because naturally that's how they would be.